Nice to see you again. In this lesson, we're going to see how we can have a flashing button. That's simple. Then, we'll see how we can use function keys and manage user on a HMI screen. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright. Let's start with the previous project. For this tank, we have written a PLC program, and this is the designed HMI, with little modification. Here, we have only two screens, start and tank screen. If you remember, we can enter the desired level in the automatic mode. In the manual mode, we can fill and discharge the tank, with their related buttons. At the bottom, I have inserted two buttons for that. Let's see, how we can have these flashing buttons. That's simple. Let's go to the tank 1 screen. Now, select the discharge button. In its properties window, select its animation tab. As you see, this button is connected to the discharge push button tag, and also, I have defined two colors, for two states of the connected tag. For the second color, I have enabled the flashing ability. Also, the fill button starts flashing, when the related tag value is 1. Alright, if you notice here, we have four function keys. F1, F2, F3, and F4. These function keys can be used to either actuate an input, or change activated screen, or for any other purpose like buttons. The basic idea behind this function keys, is that we can use them, as a local or global assignment. Let's define a local function, tank filling, for F3 key, like its upper fill button. This is very simple. In its event tab, select this function and connect it to the fill tag of the PLC program. Also, let's use F4 key, for tank discharging. As you see, when a function is defined, a yellow triangle will be shown, on the related functions key. Here, instead of these buttons, we can use a graphic to show function keys task. For example select F3, and in its properties window. Here, select a graphic for that. Now, let me remove the inserted graphic. We don't need that. Because we can understand the F3 task with its upper button. Well, let's go to the main screen. As you see, in this screen, the F3 and F4 keys don't have the yellow triangle. 
so, we can define new functions for them. Let me use logon and log off functions, which will be explained later. Now, let's test our HMI screens. All right, as you see, the logon button and the F3 key open the login window on the start screen. In the tank screen, the F3 and F4 keys can be used to fill and discharge the tank. So, F3 and F4 keys have different tasks, in each HMI screen. This way of using function keys, is called local assignment. On the other side, we have global assignment, in this state, function keys will do one task, in all HMI screens. Now, let's use F2 to open the tank screen, and F1 to open the start screen. First, activate the use local template for F1. As you see, for F3 this ability is inactive. Otherwise, its local function will be inactive, then it will use global function. Let me back to local assignment state for F3. Well, activate using local template for F2. Now, let's go to screen management, and select global screen. Here, we can define global function. So, we want to activate main screen with F1, and open the tank screen with F2. As you see, in this case, a green triangle will be shown on the F1 and F2. Like local assignment, here, we can define and use a graphic for F1 to F4. Let's back to tank screen. As you see, the F2 doesn't have green triangle. Well, I forgot to activate its global assignment in this screen. Let's start simulation. As you see, we can activate the start and tank screen with F1 and F2. Also we can use F3 and F4 for tank filling and draining on this screen. Or use F3 and F4 to log on and log off in the start screen. Alright, until now, we have seen what are basic objects and elements. Now, we're going to see what are here in the controls menu. Let's start with the user view. Let me insert it to the main screen. With this table, we can define a password for each HMI user, which have different level of authorization. Let me resize this table. Now, let's go to user administration. Select user groups. Sometime, you will notice when you log on to your HMI screen, 
you have different users. One is for the admin, one is for the operator, and one is for the viewer. Actually, here, all HMI users have been divided into three groups. In the second table, we can determine each group authorization. For example, here, the viewer group just monitors the industrial process on the HMI. Operators can monitor the industrial process on the HMI, and also do some work such as press a button or change a number. And the admin group has full accessibility. To define users, click here. In the first table, we can define new users and define their password. In the next table, we can determine, each user belongs to which group. So, Reza, belongs to the operators group. Let me define another user. This user belongs to operators group 2. Let's insert another user. I change the last user group to viewer. So, here we have one admin with full accessibility, two operators, and one viewer. Here, we can determine a time, if the automatic log off is enabled. For example, if the first user, admin, does not do anything for one minute, automatically, HMI log off this user. Let's back to HMI screens. As you know, HMI starts its work with this screen, so, everyone can see this screen. Suppose, just four defined users are allowed to see tank screen. So, we must go to the security part of this button. Here, we must determine, the selected button needs to which authorization. I select monitor authorization. If you remember, all three defined groups have monitor authorization. So, four defined users can work with this button and go to the tank screen, but others cannot. Let's go to tank screen. Suppose, just the admin user can switch between the auto and manual control. So, in its security part, I select user administration. If you remember, only the admin group has this authorization. Now, suppose the admin and operators group are allowed to work with this element. So I select operate authorization in their security parts. Because, just these two groups, have this authorization. Alright, let's test the designed HMI. First, click on the user view table, let me log on as admin, which has full accessibility. Now, I can see all user information, and change all username, passwords, user groups, and log off time. Now let's log on with another user. This user just changed its password or log off time.
Now, let's go to the tank screen. As you see, it needs a user and password, so, everyone cannot see the tank screen. Let's use Vahid user, which is in operators group. This user cannot change auto manual switch. Only the admin can change the switch, but this user can monitor and control the liquid level. Similarly, I can test the program with my PLC and HMI. At the first time, I cannot go to the tank screen. I need to use a predefined account. Now, I can change my log off time. or go to the tank screen and change the desired level. But I cannot change the control mode as an operator. Only the admin account can change this item. So, let me use the admin account. Now, I can change control mode from automatic to manual. Also, the admin can fill or discharge the tank, manually. Also, the admin account can manage other accounts. And each user can log off, when press this button. Alright, we'll continue learning the control menu. In the next video, we'll start with trend view. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.